everyone. We're going to stand and sing, come on in. Are you ready? Are you ready? Standing outside the door of love and mercy You wonder if there's a place there for you You know there's peace inside But still you're searching for someone who understands the pain you've been through Where the Father waits with open arms He's calling out your name everyone thank you thank you for singing it with us good morning all right so today we are going to be reading from Matthew it should be fun but not this um, this is from daily words for teens okay cosmic connection looking up at the stars at night from a remote place far from the lights of a city I may feel as if I could reach up and pluck a brilliant star from the sky. I feel in touch and connected to the universe. I experience a cosmic connection, a unity with God and with God's universe. Because everything has been created by God, there is no denying that I too am a creation of the master creator. I live and breathe as a divine being. The same elements that the stars and the entire universe are made of are the building blocks for the cells in my body. The same life force that created the stars and causes them to twinkle overhead also gave me life and recharges me with life every day. I may feel lonely at times, but I am never alone. I am always joined with God and all life in a cosmic connection, a network of life and creation that extends to the farthest star. I care about Mother Earth. This planet is my only home. I take good care of the Earth's resources. That's Thank all. you, Piper. We're going to sing Thank the kids you. on it. I am walking in the light, in the light, in the light. I am walking in the light, in the light of God. In the light, 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 in the light of God. That's my cue? Okay. Good morning, Unity of Tampa. Good morning, Walt. And good morning, everyone in Internet land as well. Okay. First, to start out with, do we have any first-time visitors? If so, just... Um, okay, we have somebody over there. Uh, there's a flower coming for you. And um, 
We have a gift after the service um, that you can go to the back table here and, and uh, pick up. Okay. Somebody's running behind on the slides. There we go. Okay, announcements. Um, most of the announcements are in your Sunday bulletin or online. Um, and we'll be going through a couple of them here. Uh, definitely check in on social media and also silence your phones, which I haven't silenced mine yet. Okay. Moving on. We have a congregational meeting Sunday, October today, right after the service. <laughs> Hey, I'm <laughs> Hell. Oh, yeah. Okay, moving on. <laughs> yeah, we're going to start the meeting right after the service. Okay, m moving on. We have the tail waggers, and they're going to be meeting this Friday, uh, October 7th at 10 a.m., and at Al Lopez Park, as you can see over there. And we have a vision teams coming up on the 22nd. And you can get your free continental breakfast, too. And we also have, coming up on November 6th, a membership class. Um, this is, you know, find out a little bit more about Unity. And it's, you know, for people that are interested in being a new member or if you just want a refresher course. And Snack Angels, um, are we doing that after this today, or are we going? Okay, after the, after the meeting, okay. Um, and we're also looking for more Snack Angels people, you know, to bring in snacks for after the service. And last but not least, birthdays. Slide, please. There we go. Um, is there anyone out here that has a birthday this coming week? Got a couple back there. Yes, I did have Jeffrey Beach down for October 6th. And so is there anyone else besides Jeffrey? Okay. That being said, we're done. <laughs> Thank you all. We'll sing Jeffrey and anyone else. Happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God loves you, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Jeffrey B. Yeah, don't complain about your birthday. You'll have to switch your bracelets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, thanks, special thanks to Walt, who, by the way, wasn't aware he was going to be our, uh, our platform assistant today. So how about that? <laughs> we appreciate the energy, Walt. You got us all pumped up now. All right, so first and foremost, I have to say how grateful I am to see everybody. This day could have looked a whole lot different. And I think we should just take a moment and pray. So just join me for a moment. Divine Spirit, we give thanks for our community being able to weather the storm, for being able to return to our sanctuary and our home and be able to see that everything is still here. And we pray for all the people who are not as fortunate as we are. And we ask to be guided in ways to serve those in need and share our blessings. Amen. Amen. Now, with that said, many of you have contacted me and asked if we're doing something to help with the people who suffered from the storm. And I'm just going to ask you to stay tuned, and I'll have an answer for you. 
I feel we need to focus our energies on one organization so we can make an, a bigger impact rather than everybody doing their own thing. My thought is that food is important. And no matter where people are being sheltered, they're going to need food. And the World Central Kitchen is a great place for us to consider. But I'm not making that decision by myself. So I will let you know after our board meeting tomorrow night and um, get back to everybody and we'll have Janet send out a message for how, where, and if you have a better idea than that, send me one. Because there are so many small groups going on that I feel that we need to focus on what would be most useful. And people being able to eat is important. And I know the World Central Kitchen operates on donations, as do all the groups that are going around saving people. So, yes, that would be great. Jeffrey's going to check with our unity partners to see if there's anything we can do. Maybe we can work through them. It's a great idea. Thank you. All right, with that said, I want to welcome our Facebook audience again. I know Walt did, but I'd love to thank you for all the messages. We get wonderful messages from all of you. We appreciate you. And we have many of you who donate to us regularly, and I want you to know you matter. Thank you, because it's just like you're part of our service. So I, we appreciate you. All right, a uh, special thanks to Jenis. He's our board angel on duty today, and we appreciate you as well. And let's join in saying our affirmation in a way that we actually believe. Because after this week, this should be the affirmation we're all reminded of. There is only one power and one presence in the universe and in my life God, the good, omnipotent. I also want to read today's daily word, which is kindness. And we've seen a lot of that this week. Kindness is the language of my heart. I set the intention today to give from my heart, to show compassion and kindness to everyone I meet. I begin by being kind to myself, I take time for spiritual self-care, prioritize, good nutrition, relaxation, and exercise. I am gentle with myself when I come up short, filling my self-talk with words of affirmation and confirmation and compassion. Being kind to myself makes being kind to others easy and natural. I am patient, I am understanding, I seek harmony and accord in my relationships. I let the small irritations go, remaining calm and pleasant. I look for ways to lighten the load of others, and I don't hesitate to offer a helping hand. My kindness helps create the kingdom of heaven on earth. And from Matthew 25, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. What lovely thoughts. And that's what our congregation is like. It's how I feel every time I see you. And I just wanna, before I hand it off, I wanna thank our band um, how about a round of applause for our amazing band? And Duncan up there hiding. I don't know how many of you ever go say hi to Duncan, but you know he's been here since he was born. So uh, if you don't know him, he literally sat on the piano in a baby thing carriage. So. Uh, I'm just telling you, I feel like he's our child, Unity's <laughs> child. <laughs> and David, thank you for all you do. Not only does David help us back there, but he helps Jeffrey and I with so many other things. The 
bird bath, the, the carrying of the water, the helping fix things, help us up in the sound booth when we need it, and we're appreciative of you. <laughs> and Michael, thank you back there. I know you and Jeffrey Beach do a great job of managing our congregants and greeting them. Thank you. Thank you to Jeffrey B. for running the show back there while Vivian's out of town and Luis is out of town. I mean, we left him uh, in charge of everything. <laughs> and you do a fine job, I might add. And of course, our special board. So, And that's it for me. I'm going, I don't know if I missed anybody, but if I did, we love them. Thank you, Nancy. We love you, too. Thank you. Love, love, love. Love, love, love. And speaking of which, we're going to stand and sing this new song here. Oh
Hey, that's awesome, you guys. Thank you so much for that energy on that song. Thanks to Michael for that song. You guys like this song? Get to have Chris playing some trumpet on a sing-along. That's this what is I fun was just stuff. Yeah. Say. yeah. All right. I think oh. you passed the audition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of fun having you be up here in the middle of the service. <laughs> Everybody's like, wait, is he new? <laughs> they come in late, they leave early, you know, they don't know. You've been here for 20 years. <laughs> All right, Jeffrey has found us a great story for today. Uh, we had a different story, but it seemed only right that we have something from this past week. So we're going to show you a great video of um, all the good we saw this week. Well, some good. Sometimes, Sometimes the worst of Mother worst Nature can nature. also bring can out, also the, bring best out the best in humans. In humans. These everyday, These everyday heroes, heroes show courage, show courage and, and, kindness, and kindness, helping strangers, helping strangers brave the storm. Brave the storm. to Americans what cyclones are to Australians, isn't it? But this one is as big as Florida. That is massive. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, are you OK? Yes. It's, it's an enormous, uh, an enormous storm. Yeah, no, fine. We're just, uh, just helping some people through the water here. That's our camera operator, uh, Glenn Ellis, out there. I think you can see yeah. trying to help people who are wading away from their homes. We've spoken to a couple of them, and they tell us that uh, they tell us already that. Um, uh, their houses have been lost in the water, but they're flooded right through and they've had to abandon them. They've had just had no other way of, uh, of doing it, but they're trying to get out. And obviously what we've got here is relatively high ground. So, um Stay safe, Stay safe, everyone. Such a reminder, right? If you're like me, you've been crying much of the week, wondering about, you know, how th that need to feel compassion for other people. It's so, it's just natural for us, you know? And even when we can't help, it's that feeling that we're providing support somehow through our compassion. So it's great. Uh, such great people have turned out from everywhere. I was talking to Amy Jo before the service about, you know, people are everywhere coming out. I mean, everywhere. Uh, no matter where they live, thousands of people have shown up in Florida to support the state. It's incredible. I don't know how many people, how many of us are in other states and we decide, oh, I'm going to get in the car and go to the place where they're hurting the most. Not many of us do that. 
So I think it's beautiful, and I hope it's a reminder to you when you're not feeling so good about the world to remember that, because there's a lot of good here. All right, let's get ready for meditation. So I invite you now to take a few deep breaths, cleansing breaths. Just fill your lungs with fresh air. Release your worries. Remember to be grateful. Feel those blessings. And just listen as I share these words. Every day, I have free will to choose how I experience my life. And if I embrace the principles that Jesus taught, I can navigate anything I face while de demonstrating my divine self. While I may not be in control of outcomes, I can definitely control the way I experience those circumstances and how they affect me in the days that follow. Through establishing clear values, my words and my actions are consciously chosen to shape every situation for my highest good and for the goodwill of all. God's presence lives within each of us and releasing that divine energy requires being mindful of how we affect one another. I am empowered to lead by example and to help others find their way when I operate 
as a reflection and instrument of God. With that mindset, I can trust that the answers will be revealed. They always are. And those answers will shape my experiences. My life is a mere reflection of my thoughts. What I experience can come from my thoughts. If I don't like what I'm experiencing or bringing to me, the things that are within my control, I only need to change my thoughts and identify with the Christ spirit within, wanting the best for myself and for others is the most important attitude I will ever embrace. Holding the high watch, seeing everyone's good unfold. My purpose on this earth is revealed every day but I must continue to remain open and aware. And so in this moment, I take time to rest in the silence, opening my heart, listening, and trusting that I will know what is right for me. There's so much peace in the silence. I celebrate my humanity by becoming a reflection of God, an instrument for peace. And with my mind and heart centered, my thoughts clearer, I sit here in peace, knowing my eyes will be open to my next best lesson. Thank you, Bobby. Good morning, Logan. So this past week, there was a lot of angst and stress in our state. Everybody worried about what to do, where to go, do we leave, we stay, board up the house, don't board up the house. Go stay with someone who may be evacuating themselves. Lots and lots of things. But I was most struck by the number of people I was receiving messages from the day of, during, and the day after. People I haven't spoken to in years were reaching out. And I 
kept telling Jeffrey, I'm hearing from so many people that it was this momentary reminder that all of us are connected. That even though we haven't talked in a while, they were feeling what we were feeling and just wanted reassurance that I might be able to tell them I'm okay and maybe that would make them feel better about our area. It was really humbling and at the same time, such a wonderful feeling for me. And then I saw the same going on in the world as the news unfolded, people trying to help people just like the videos. And in many ways, I felt that all of us were trying to protect each other's flame, like I talked about last week, to keep the flames burning and to keep the wind from knocking the light out, literally and figuratively. Then seeing all the volunteers pouring into our community and the spirit around that, it all brought me back to this thought I've always had about Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. When he shares the Beatitudes and talks about the principles and the values by which we should live, looking all those years back and thinking they are still relevant today if we can understand them. Sometimes it's difficult to interpret what was intended. But today, even with the short amount of time I have, I am, <laughs> I am going to walk us through them. So one of the things I was struck by recently was learning the Beatitudes are spelled B-E-A-T-I-T-U-D-S. But I met Reverend Richard Bach, who introduced them as the B attitudes. And when he did, it all made more sense to me. These are the attitudes we're supposed to embrace. The B attitudes. I always thought it just meant blessings because that's what Beatitudes mean. But these are our, our values. So I want to share them with you. And, but before I do, I want you to have this quote in your head from Charles Fillmore. Because Richard Bach, Reverend Bach, said, when he in introduced it that way, he said, this quote is helpful to understand. God's greatest gift to humankind is the power of thought through which one can incorporate into one's consciousness the mind of God. So as I read these, I want you to imagine you're part of that mind of God. And we'll never know what Jesus meant exactly because we can't ask that question. But we can definitely trust we would only be better people if we did any of these. So the first one is blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And what that means is that we must be humble enough to know that we need to grow. Humble in spirit means you don't know it all. And that it, we need to allow ourselves to develop qualities of acceptance and non-judgment and not be so quick to say we know the answer. Jesus in that in that first one was trying to convey the importance of demonstrating our divinity by serving the good of all people, not just ourselves or our preferred friends. But that would be helpful in fulfilling our purpose on earth. The second one says, blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. And this isn't just about mourning loss of loved ones. We've all lost people in our lives, and we will always grieve those losses. But it's also about losing in life, 
losing things we cherished, losing experiences we may have thought we'd have. We grieve over our disappointments sometimes. But in all of them, the point is that our faith and strength always carries us through. So all those people grieving right now over as a result of the hurricane, it's their faith and strength that will carry them through. And us holding the high watt for them that will carry them through. That energy is felt everywhere. So just because you didn't run down to Fort Myers doesn't mean no one feels the energy you're sending. Number three is blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And what that means is that we need to live without our egos and demonstrate patience in life, patience for ourselves, patience for others. Our attitudes need to be one of gentleness, not aggressiveness, kindness, not forcefulness. It doesn't matter if everyone doesn't see what we see. What matters is how we show up and how our attitudes push life forward without knocking people down. We don't need to be easily angered or quick to defend. We need to be meek. Number four is, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Now, this one has a literal and a figurative perspective. The literal perspective is what we were just talking about earlier, the world's central kitchen, helping feed those in need. That's the literal version of hunger and thirst. But the bigger picture is hunger and thirst for knowledge and wisdom. And the fact that we are all on this earth to be teachers, all of us. It might be something simple like showing someone how to do something when they're struggling. It might be simple like walking into a store and seeing they need help there and carrying a box forward. It doesn't matter what it is you're doing, there are ways that we can be sharing our wisdom without shoving it down other people's throats. We're all on this earth to learn from each other and our attitude has to be one of teaching and sharing wisdom when others are seeking it. Number five is blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. We must always strive to show compassion for each other and compassion for ourselves. But even those who offend us or hurt us, we must be able to show compassion because an attitude that reflects the divine is one that can rise above pettiness not get caught up in the small hurts and the rude words. And look at the higher picture. Whether someone can demonstrate awareness or not or has the ability to show compassion is not for us to say. We must only demonstrate it ourselves. And as long as we're doing our part, it's part of our purpose on this earth. Number six is, blessed are those who are pure in heart, for they shall see God. Now, literally, people thought back then, right, if I am pure of heart, I'll get to heaven and see God. But it's, we know it in this day, that God is within. And that exposure to that wisdom comes from having a heart that's open, not a heart that's hardened by the past. The more we operate from the heart and see from our heart to someone else's heart, the more we will come together and find places to forgive each other. 
and maybe even have an attitude in our communities that is blameless and shameless and even complaint-free. Number seven is, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. This is my favorite, because I really believe if we were all peacemakers, all the rest would come together. And this simply means that every single day we need to find ways to be peace, to seek peace, to share peace, every single day. And it's only achieved when we get to that place within ourselves where we are at peace. You cannot bring peace to anyone when you are not at peace. Try it someday. You're conflicted, you're stressed, and you're trying to be peaceful. Not really. <laughs> it doesn't really work. So if you feel that kind of angst in your life, then you know you haven't found your peace today. Doesn't mean you didn't find it yesterday. Doesn't mean you won't find it. But peaceful people are people who will make a difference in this world. They don't walk into stores demanding managers. They don't complain about what they don't have. They don't complain about what they should have. They just find a way to be purposeful and be an instrument for God. Number eight, the last one, is blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. At the end of the day, we all should want to do what is right. Not what we think is right, but what is right from a divine perspective. The truth is, throughout our lives, people are going to challenge our beliefs. They're going to challenge what we say. They're always going to have two cents to add. But if we're looking heart to heart, that's not what we hear. What we hear are people who really care about us, wanting to share a perspective. That's what we hear. Not, oh, there they go again. So I want you to look at everyone that you see in this coming week and think about the fact that you don't need to question what you believe is right if it's coming from your divinity. You only need to question whether it's right if it's coming from your ego. And you think you're right. And it is not one of the moral attitudes that Jesus tried to convey. You know, when I think back to the delivery of the Sermon of the Mount, on the Mount, so many things I read all these years, and now here I am all these years later thinking it was so much simpler than I ever understood. We can do these eight things. They're not that hard. But I invite you to embrace those that you will adopt the fastest, and then work on the others. You can find them in Matthew. You can also just Google them, and they come up. Let's review our takeaways for today. Living the B attitudes requires us to be the example of faith-filled practices and serve the goodwill of all people. Number two, to be the person who takes right actions and helps others find their way. Number three, to be pure of heart, see the God in everyone. And number four, to be the peacemaker, to live peacefully and help others do the same. And our affirmation today is, I am an instrument for God, and I just want to say, I used for God instead of of God because I think there is a slightly different emphasis when you think it that way. Let's say it together. I am an instrument for God. Now, I want you to repeat that to yourself this entire week. So before you do something you'll regret, 
You ask yourself, am I an instrument for God in this moment? I'd like to end with this quote by George Kuleha. The blessings of the Beatitudes are there for me, for you, if we live our life through the love and will of God. And so it is. Let's take that in. We give thanks all these years later for these amazing Beatitudes. We embrace the opportunity to live by these principles, to recognize in ourselves that all of these are achievable when we take a huge step back from our intellect and operate instead from our heart. Amen. If you have a prayer need, please feel free to leave it in the back. And I would just invite you now to join me in saying our affirmation together, our prosperity affirmation, because the more we continue to do that, the more we can continue to do for our community. We have faith in God as our instant, constant, abundant supply and supplier. We have faith in God to open ways when to the human sense there is no way. We have faith in God to guide us in all our ways, and our health, happiness, and prosperity are assured. Thank you, God, for your abundant good, now flowing forth to meet our every need. Amen. And with that said, do we want to sing the peace song, or can we move into our meeting and sing the peace song after? That's what I would like to do. So we're going to, I'm going to invite Margaret and Jeffrey up here. And I'm just going to move this out of the way. Thank you, Elliot, for the chairs. I got this. No worries. No, no. It's totally good. No, please. Allow me. No, no, please. <laughs> no, no, please. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, please. I get little school. Oh, I don't want to sit in the middle. Go sit by. I don't want to sit in the middle. <laughs> I don't want to sit in the middle. What was I supposed to talk about? Uh, oh. <laughs> um, Good morning. Is this on? Yes, it's on. It's okay. on. Okay, wonderful. So if you don't know, I'm Margaret Kubelins, the uh, president of the Board of Trustees. It's not on, is it? It's on. It's on. Oh. Oh, closer. Oh. <laughs> uh, there's a song in there, right? Get closer to me. Oh. <laughs> okay, so again, I am Margaret Kivlins. If you don't know, I'm the president of the um, Unity of Tampa Board of Trustees. So um, it's wonderful to be here. Thank you, Nancy and Jeffrey, for your continued leadership. They do a fabulous job. Thank you. And I want to and I want to iterate that although you see them more out in the front and providing this leadership. It takes all of you and all the contributions that you make in order to make us a, a mission-centric spiritual center. So thank you. You all deserve a, a yes. round of applause as well. So keeping along that theme, I'm going to focus on the financials of um, the church or for our spiritual center. We are in good shape. <laughs> okay, so just so everyone knows, um, about a year ago, after the sale of the property over on Horatio, we had some money that, um, it was cash, that we had free and clear, and so we engaged with our very own Mark Scaglione on um, helping us decide how to take that sum of money, invest it for a long-term vision. Um, so we put in quite a bit of money into a long-term account about a year ago, and then um, since then, we've, over the course of the year, I'll admit, we have lost money because of the market. Okay, so where does that leave us? We've done the evaluation, we've consulted with the professionals, um, we are holding tight to the money, um, like people that have a lot of money, they tend to buy low and um, sell high. So we're holding tight on the money. We expect that we will be able to recover. Um, the world is changing. We've made some adjustments in where the investments are. 
as well as recognizing we have a midterm election this fall and historically it always the market always has an uptick after that so that money staying um, true and we'll see how it progresses and we'll make adjustments according to what's going on short term back in the spring we started or back in the well in the spring we noticed we had um, a set aside money to pay for like the module build, modular building and some of the smaller investments in the property and we decided to take the money out of the market and we put it in a money market account in our local checking um, our local bank mm -hmm. so we didn't have further losses since there was a huge drop um, and so we avoided that we put it in there and so we have the money just waiting in the bank for being able to pay for the modular building and other minor repairs and other investments in the property here. So uh, Nancy, uh, well Jeffrey's gonna talk more about the modular and when we should expect that. So we do have the courtyard money still holding true in the bank account as well. So we still have that ready to do when it's time. And then the big is on the operation funding. We are just over the nine months, we are just at break even. So your tithings that are coming into the church, we are right at the, that line of breaking even. We're just a little bit above, like less than $1,000 for the nine months. So um, as we grow, fortunately, we don't have additional expenses really that'll come about. So as our congregation grows and people continue to tithe, that we'll see an uptick in there and we anticipate that going because of our online presence and then of course all the opportunities that will come about for the vision team and people will see more spiritual growth will expand our reach and our words so we expect that that's gonna um, continue to grow um, may I add one thing of course you may I just want to point out to everybody that we still give every month that thousand dollars regardless of what we take in so I want you to know we have a prosperity consciousness that no matter what we take in we're going to donate did she read my notes yes <laughs> yes Sorry. exactly no yeah. we are totally on absolutely yeah we are tithing we did shift um, there was a period where we did not have money so we have um, moved to where we're tithing a thousand dollars a month so we're giving back um, and then of course all your donations and your time that's a way of tithing as well yeah. um, as well as the um, time talent talent and treasure <laughs> thank you so um, we really appreciate it again it takes everyone's contributions for our success um, let's see what else do I have I think that's it that's it that's all I have if you have more um, questions um, I'm more than happy to answer those. So should we just wait till the end? Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. All right, thank you. No, you go for next. Okay, and if everybody knows me, I'm Mr. Nancy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we actually... Are you sure, Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. So we, we, we fared really well in the storm, uh, and we, we lost some shingles on the Fellowship Hall, which we're going to have to redo the roof. We lo lost a few shingles here, so we'll be contracting a, a roofer to be able to, to assess and, and repair some of these damages. Uh, but overall, we did really well. We had no major damage, which we're grateful for. Um, How so, about the neighbor putting up the fence? Yeah, the, right. One of the, one of the fences came down. Our neighbor put it back up for us. It was really nice. The gentleman that, um, so the, uh, the tree that was, was removed uh, right before the storm, we were, we were very fortunate. Our neighbor actually removed that tree for us, and we saved probably close to, I would say, four, four to $5,000 by having him do it. And that tree was, we had, a, we had an arborist come out. The tree was actually in the stages of dying. And when they were taking the tree down, they actually, when they cut the one, one of the branches down, a major, almost half the tree cracked in half and fell over. So we were, it was, it was at its life, at end of life cycle, and we didn't want that up by our, where the new modular building is. That's what's the main reason why we wanted to get rid of it. But it was at the end of life cycle, and it probably saved us from, during that storm because I really believe it would have come down anyway. Yeah. But he, he came on, um, when I came over on Friday, 
Yeah, the Friday. Friday, and and he actually blew off all the the there was there was debris all over the roads, and he got his blower out. So he it, he does a, a wonderful job. I'm thankful for him. So that was a. And we paid him, just so you know, we didn't ask him to do that job. Yeah. He has a tree business, yeah. but the other bids we got in were 3,500 more than what he. Right. No, we, we paid him to remove the tree, but then he, he stepped up on his own and he blew he off all, all the, the other did, and, and cleaned up around here a little bit, which was r really nice of him. So um, we're going to, uh, we're moving forward on, uh, on with the, the modular building. I've, I've already, I've learned a lot in this whole process. It's kind of like with the septic tank. I've become the, you know, as a septic tank guru there for a while. <laughs> um, but, you know, so I've, I've contracted, we have a, a general contractor who when we get ready to do Fellowship Hall, he will be overseeing everything and he'll be able to, to look at all of the, everything, all the functions, all of the jobs that are being done. So when we're, when we're ready to move into re remodeling Fellowship Hall, we have a general contact contractor. He is a retired. He, is, he has worked with many nonprofits. He's worked with many churches around this area. I think it, we are lucky to be able to contact him and, and get him. So that was one, one good thing. We also, I, I contacted an electrician because there was a, we have a little private utility pole that was out for the, where the trailer used to be, where the, when we first got here, there was a trailer out on that build, on the site where the modular building is going. And there was a little private pole that brought the electricity into there and it has a meter on it. So we had to di get that disconnected and it's the only thing that's on it now is the, ex is the sign. So I brought an electrician out who was a really, he, and again, in walking through this and talking with him, we are, we are talking about what do we do? How do we, you know, do we move that pole? Do we reconnect the power to the modular building that way? And so in, in working through all the scenarios, the, the best case scenario, the, the, the most financially sound decision that we've, we've come up with is what we're, gonna, what we're doing right now is he's already started to pull the permits to upgrade the electrical panels on Fellowship Hall. So, and then what he'll do is he'll put all, he'll put two brand new panels in that will be upgraded from the exi existing panels, which will, will only be using one of them for the time being for Fellowship Hall. The other panel will be there in reserve for when the modular building is, is put in place. That will supply the power to that and it'll also be able to supply any power to the new bathrooms and the extension that we're putting on. So in doing so, we, we've kind of cut out a whole we, we don't have to wait for the permitting process for the, for the remodel, if that makes sense. We can do this solely on our own. It's a single, it's a standalone project. He's already got it started. And what we'll do also is we will bury the power line. In this one corner right here, there's, there's, a, there's a power line that runs to the church up in the air. So what we're doing is we're actually burying that in the ground and running that in. And that does two things. It keeps it, it prevents us from having any storm damage or the power outage of that building. But it also does, it makes sure that we don't have any, an extra uh, uh, line into our roof. So when we, we redo that roof, anytime you penetrate your roof, even if it's just with an electrical unit, you're, you're, it's an area for leakage, right? So that's, an, that's another good thing is that we'll, we'll get rid of that big wire going across, that'll be buried. Um, so that was all really, that, that's all a really good news. And that's already in the process. And we're also looking at, and probably in the, in the next, probably before Christmas, we're going to spruce up Fellowship Hall a little bit. We don't want to spend a lot of money because we're getting, we know we're getting ready to remodel. But we do want to, we're probably going to spend, I think we said maybe a couple hundred dollars, $500 at the most to repaint and maybe put some new lights up and things like that so that when we can, as we wait for the permits and everything for Fellowship Hall, at least it's, it's spruced up a little bit for the beginning of the year. And so the really cool news is drum roll. Drum roll. Where's Alvin? There he is. Oh. Thank you. The modular building is finished. It is complete. We just got word yesterday. Yes. We just got word yesterday. It is complete. It's done. So And it's sitting <coughs> waiting to come here. Right. It's sitting. So the bad news is, is is with with permitting being the way it is, I mean permits have been way Slow. behind. So we're probably looking at December before we get all of our final permits in. And once we get the permits set, then they will pour, pour the footer for that. They, they actually have to dig the trench around. It's a 12 inch by 20, 20 12 inches deep by 24 inches wide. And it's a, a, a cement footer that will go underneath that modular building to make sure it's secure. So before they can even start to dig that, we have to have all the permits in place. 
and we will, we're going to work on doing some grading in, on the parking lots to keep the water. There's some other, we have to, we have to make a little more area in the back. There'll be a little swell dug out towards, towards the back portion of the, of the property to hold more water because we don't want to have to, we have a retention pond in the back, but since we're covering up some of the land, right, and it's, I forget what they call it, what is it, it's um, pervious versus impervious, right? <laughs> so the more land you cover, the more, the more you have to have for, for water retention. So instead of having to build that, water, that retention pond out and, and encroach onto our beautiful property back there, we're, we're, we're hope to have, in the end, that we'll have a nice picnic area back there, We'll just we'll be able to put some swells along the, along the side, so just little indentations that will when it rains really really hard they'll collect water, but yet they'll be will usable all other times. So that's the um, that's probably the updates with the uh, with the everything else. So I think we're in really great shape with moving forward, mm -hmm. and and we we were we did put the fellowship hall kind of a little bit on the back burner because we're waiting for our funds to come back in. You know, or to, to actually for the for our investments to build back up a little bit, but we it it's we we're still in really really good shape, and and we're not you know we're just trying to be very um, responsible, very responsible, right, and not do it right, or not do anything at the moment. But trust me, Fellowship Hall will be will be starting on that. I guarantee next year at some point, and we'll and we'll get all that done as well. Now one yeah, that's really yeah. good news. Yeah, I, I just want to point out between both of my partners here that the most important thing I want everybody to hear is this board and this entire congregation, practicing prosperity has paid off. We put 300000 in a short-term account at the beginning of the time we moved, saying we're going to have to use that to make up for what we can't pay every month. And guess what? We haven't used that. So when we're short one month, the next month seems to help us out. And it's all been, like Margaret said, it's all just barely. We're, we might just be breaking even, but we never had to depend on that money to right. carry us. But I don't believe that was coincidence. It's prosperity consciousness. Are you? Yeah, we, we had, we had, a uh, when in the beginning, even for many, many years, we were running a deficit of about $10,000 a month. Yep. So when we sold the building, we put $120,000 aside and said, this is for our deficit to cover the $10,000 a month that we're cont had been continually going in the hole for a, a, a long time. And we, we never touched any of that money. Yep. We, we didn't touch any of that money, and it's because I, and it's because of all of you and everything that everybody. It, we've been so fortunate and so blessed that w you know, with the money that comes in and people, not only just the money, but people stepping up to do so many things yeah. around here. The you know, when people come and and it's really remarkable when people come and they they look at our landscaping and all that. And when I tell them, I say, every single one of these plants came from the old church. The old church. And people are amazed. They're like, really? And I say, they, because they, you know, they leveled our courtyard, right? It's completely gone now. It's, it's, they, and they said, hey, whatever, take whatever you want. Well, the garden crew took that as, <laughs> took they took everything. everything. <laughs> they took everything. I mean, Except the sidewalk. Right? I mean, other than that big giant tree, I mean, we took everything. I mean, they, yeah. they spent weeks bringing stuff. And all, that, and all that saved us so much money. We have a beautiful campus. All of the, all of the bricking around there, all that came from, our, from the Horatio bu building. And, all, and it, it all has meaning to us. Not only is it beautifying, but it all has meaning. And it saved us so much money. We have so many people that step up and donate food and, you know, water coolers. And, I mean, it, you know, it's just, I mean, it's just so heartening. Well, it's just with, a that, reminder everybody. that everybody owns this place. Right, right. It's everybody. Right. It's, it's collectively we do so well. Yep. And it's just, it's, it's so in inspiring. Okay, you're eating into my minutes. <laughs> this is Miss, Mr. Nancy out. <laughs> All right. I just, okay. I just, ha I just need a few minutes. So one thing I want to ask everybody to do is mark on your calendars right now, Saturday, October 22nd, to be at Fellowship Hall with me at 830 on Saturday morning. Now, here's why. How many of you have ever 
been part of a vi division teams at Unity of Tampa? Raise your hand. All right. If you've been part of the team, tell me what we do. Carol Ann, what do we do? One hundred percent. Couldn't have said it better myself. We create teams who focus on specific areas they're interested in to help set the direction for those areas. And collectively, we run everything together. Now, right now we have eight or nine teams that I'm envisioning we're going to need. Things like our gardening team. Maybe gardening picks up gardening and hospitality. I don't know. We'll make all those decisions that day. We need a youth team. We need a marketing team. We're definitely going to need our, an outreach team. Norma cannot keep pulling people without having a team to work with. We definitely need a care team. Linda Reed sends out every birthday card. She sends out every get well card. She visits everyone. And while we have a bunch of chaplains, we don't have a care team. I want a care team to support her. And maybe she'll get a break. Who knows? <laughs> but, but my point is that mission-centric churches have groups like this. And for 12 years, Something like that. I think I ran 10 years. I ran them at the old Unity of Tampa. And we had 68 people. The last group we had, we had 68 people involved. And I really think we need to get back to that. And Margaret's been a big champion of us returning to that mindset, and I'm grateful for that. So October 22nd, 8.30 to 9, we're going to have breakfast, and then we're going to get to work. And my hope is that I'll have leaders amongst all of you who want to lead these teams. And you get to create your own charter. What do you want to focus on? And identify the first few things you're going to take on. But we're going to be focused. And we're going to have a great day together. And Janice, would you like to add anything? Because Janice is going to be my co-partner on this. Or co-pilot, I should say. Yeah, we, we, we had all time for all new relationships. It was really wonderful. And I, I, a lot of the people here today are people that came from those vision teams for Nancy, me. Nancy, I just yeah. want to add to please. that. So please, the, the power of um, establishing more of this in a more formal way, it allows you to bring your talents Mm -hmm. in order to dedicate your time, but bring your talents into different ways. We have had a lot of community outreach, we've talked about care teams, but there are other ways for you to give. Well, like um, if you want to be part of the remodel next year, we're gonna have a facility team. Right, or if you're a technology expert, you know, you want to help with the website or something else with broadcasting yep. and maybe um, editing, like you could be a part of the edits of the recordings of the um, of our services or any workshops that we do, you can help expand in that way. And the, the importance of us establishing this now is that it actually sets the foundation for our growth. Yeah. So when we have new people that are coming, they'll they find place. ways that they can participate and be a part of the community. Because right now we kind of have a narrow focus, which is great. I mean, what we've done is fantastic, but we're like at this cusp in order to establish that foundation for broader growth. 
So it's pretty exciting. So yeah. thank you, Nancy. It's a very good point that that people want to, many people have asked, where, where can I contribute? The only other thing I just want to remind you of is that November 6th, Jeffrey and I will be teaching that, uh, that new member class. If you don't know anything about Unity and you don't remember, or you just want to join us, you don't, even if you are a member, feel free to come. It'll be after the service, we're going to provide lunch, and um, we're going to just spend a few hours bringing people up to speed in the Unity way. Okay? And that's it for me. Yep. Yes, sir. Oh, <laughs> funny guy, Bobby. Funny guy, Bobby, really, wouldn't I? Anybody else have questions? Questions? Comments? Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank All right, you. Thank you. All right, let's sing the peace song. Let's send down the peace song so we can all be at peace. together and sing the prayer of protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is great. God bless you. Thank you for staying today. And stop in and get some food if you're hungry. I know Jeffrey B's in charge over there.